Hi everyone, what's up? Welcome to my channel, Vegan Mofo. I'm Marie. Hi everyone, what's up? I'm Marie. Welcome to my channel, Vegan Mo Show. <laughs> okay. Hi everyone, what's up? I'm Marie. Welcome to my channel, Vegan Mofo, where I share delicious plant-based recipes that are vegan, gluten-free, and refined sugar-free, offer tips on natural wellness, um, conscious living, and much more. Consider subscribing to my channel. It's free to subscribe, and you'll be able to see when I've uploaded new content. So for today's video, I'm going to do a weight training arm workout, and I'm going to show you um, what supplements, what nutrition and supplements I use pre and post workout and peri workout, actually. It's going to be a full arm workout with um, just a few simple pieces of free weight equipment. Oh, and I would love for you to follow along with me if you'd like. We're going to be doing three biceps exercises and three triceps exercises, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And there's actually um, a couple of great benefits to weight training. Um, one in particular is that it helps keep your bones strong and healthy by making your bones become acclimated to the bearing of the weight so they don't, you know, start to degrade and decay because they want, you know, they innately want to stay strong and calcified to be able to bear that weight if you do it regularly. And also, muscle actually burns fat. It does, it helps burn fat. It, it helps your body to become sort of more thermogenic. So that's another really great benefit. As a matter of fact, um, when I first start working out, um, sort of after coming on down like off of a hiatus as I am right now. So when I first start weight training again regularly, I actually gain a few pounds first. And then as the adipose tissue and the muscle tissue begins to sort of do its exchange, then I actually start seeing more of the weight loss, more of the, um, leanification yes i think i just made that word up but the toning and and that sort of thing so um what's really cool about this is you can decide how hard you want to go at it and even with minimal even with minimal effort you can see results but with a very dedicated effort and focus you can really make tremendous changes to your body and it's it's kind of just neat to do just as an experiment just to see you know how far you can go and what kind of changes you can make and it's 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 a, it's a lot of fun. I, I know different people have different preferences as far as exercising and working out and I've just sort of always been drawn to weight training. I have tried a few other things but this seems to work out for me. Uh, oh another good benefit is it's incredible for your just your state of well-being, your mental state and your state of well-being. I mean really any hobby that you enjoy and that you see progress with and that you know has a positive impact so i encourage you to pick one or a couple of hobbies you know whether they be cooking or trying vegan food you know vegan lifestyle <laughs> just kidding or you know weight training so this is the plant-based protein powder that i like to use it has no refined sugar in it and each scoop contains 21 grams of protein and only two carbs. It has no chia seed in it, which is good for me since I'm intolerant, and it dissolves and blends very easily in liquids and foods like oatmeal. And these are the branched chain amino acids that I use. This is a peri-workout blend, so it can be used before, during, or after workout. It's very tasty, but the flavors can be quite strong, so I like to mix a half a scoop of a flavored variety with a half a scoop of the unflavored, and it also dissolves well in liquid. And these are the pre- and post-workout supplements that I use consistently for energy support and recovery. So for my protein shake, I am starting out with about seven frozen organic strawberries. And adding in four ounces of aloe vera juice. Four ounces of soy milk. A scoop of vegan protein powder in a uh, vanilla flavor. A 
teaspoon of vitamin C powder, which is anti-inflammatory. It's good when you're working out because it helps uh, reduce inflammation from the microtrauma that you're doing to the muscles. And one tablespoon of roasted almond butter. And this stuff is amazing. It tastes so good. I actually have a recipe where I make the most amazing and simple uh, gluten-free, vegan, refined, sugar-free chocolate chip cookies. And I use this and it, ah, uh, delicious. I'll definitely show you that one sometime. So for this little arm workout, I'm simply using a weight bench, a pair of 10 pound dumbbells, a cambered barbell with two five pound plates attached, and a pair of gloves. And that's really how simple this is. You don't even really need the weight bench. You could probably do most of these on an exercise ball, probably except for one tricep exercise. But you could also do that on the couch or on the edge of your bed if you wanted to. So um, yeah, so that's it, pretty simple. Okay, so I have my prepared branched chain amino acids, which I showed you earlier, and I'll be sipping these throughout. They actually help to give you a um, little more energy getting through the workout. And branched chain amino acids are actually the um, building blocks of protein. So they help you to uh, kind of get faster results. I do want to say a word about some of these supplements. And I'm planning to do a video on this um, sometime soon, sometime in the future. Branched chain amino acids are animal derived. So they're not entirely vegan, as many things are, as you know. Um, the video I wanna make is kind of in regards to is it really even possible to be 100% vegan because um, <clears throat> animal products are just ubiquitous? And so the point I'm trying to drive home is not to make anybody feel bad, just to make us feel like we're doing the best with that, that we, we're doing the best that we can, right? And um, to appreciate and honor, you know, the essence of all the things that we consume that become a part of us. And we owe it to them to try to be our best selves and, um, contribute back and set examples for others. So there, all right, that's it. I don't even have to do the video now. It's all good, I just drove the point home. No, I'm just kidding. I'm probably still gonna do it because I wanna talk about all the things that, you know, that are unknowingly non-vegan just because it's interesting. Anyways, so what else? I feel like there was some, oh. So I hope you don't mind. There is gonna be a little bit of background noise in this video. Um, in my last video, there was an accidental background noise because I forgot to turn the AC up. Somebody may or may not have forgotten to turn the AC off. But anyways, um, so I remembered to turn the AC off today. However, I do have a light fan on because where I live right now in the middle of summer, it's hot as a mofo, okay? It's hot as a vegan mofo, so what are you gonna do? All right, so let's get started. We are gonna start with a, just a simple dumbbell curl, okay? I usually do anywhere from 10 to 12 reps. It just depends. I am only using 10 pound weights. You know, you don't have to lift heavy weights to see results, to get some tone, see some muscle tone. You really don't. You could get great muscle tone by um, even, even gain by using 10 pound weights and doing 20 reps. We're not gonna do that today. But of course, if you're really trying to see intense results, then of course you're gonna wanna lift heavy. But like I said, I'm coming coming off of a hiatus of not working out. All the gyms in my area have closed. They opened for a month and now they're closed again. So it's time for me to get my butt in gear and start doing something. So why don't you join me? So here we go. One, two, two, three, three, four, four. You wanna kind of flex at the top, flex your bicep. Five, six. Seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. 
10, 11, 11, 12, 12. Whew, I feel that. So, and then we're gonna take like a 30 to 60 second rest in between. So most of what I've read about breathing, and I've been working out for a long time, and, and I know this, but I don't always follow it because it's, it's one of those things, like apparently everybody, even like ancient cultures, Indian cultures and stuff, say that we don't breathe right. We do not breathe correctly. For instance, you're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to um, tense up your diaphragm, um, I think when you exhale, which just seems awkward because you would think that you're tensing it to force the air out. But as far as um, weightlifting, so basically when you're doing the concentric exercise, which means we're working right now, this is a bicep exercise. So I'm shortening the muscle, right? I'm making the point of origin and attachment shorter. And you're actually supposed to exhale at that point and inhale on the negative release or the, the eccentric part. And these things just, they don't feel intuitive, but I guess we've just been somehow programmed to breathe incorrectly, I suppose. The main thing I follow is just breathe. Make sure you're breathing regularly in a, in a rhythm that's comfortable for you. And um, like I said, if you decide to, hang on, I need to sip. If you decide you want to like hit this really hard and see what you can do with yourself, then you want to try to program yourself to do that really good breathing because every, every little edge you can get is going to help you get closer to your goals if you're going to do it in a very intense and focused manner. All right, second rep, second set. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, and twelve. Whew. Yeah, I can feel that it's been a while. Oh, get a little stretch. Oh my goodness, I forgot to show you guys a stretch. That's okay. I'll just, I'll do it some other time. I'm planning to do um, some other workouts. I basically break up my workouts into three days and three body parts. There was a time when I worked out five days a week. And like I said, that's when you're doing that, you know, that hyper-focused stuff. But, um, but since I'm trying to create more balance and harmony in my life and very much seeking moderation in all things that I do. Um, you know, I've had to let go of some of my, some of my ex extreme behaviors. And you know, it's just like a lot of things in life, there is no end point. It's something you strive for every day, just like health and nutrition, just like veganism, just like working on our personal development, you know, all these things, you never really completely get there. There's always going to be highs and lows. You can think that you've, you know, arrived and then maybe something really traumatic can occur that will just test you. <laughs> I'm sure you can all relate to that. So, you know, the key is we need to give ourselves room to grow, give ourselves room, learn from our mistakes and just try to, you know, try to do our best each time. Oh, that feels so good. All right, here we go. Uh, set three. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, whew, nine. 10, 10, 11, 11, 12, and 12. Oh, nice, and now we only have one more set to go. So the bummer is that, you know, we don't have as many options for variety 
doing this at home than we do at the gym without other external equipment. Um, I like to use this one machine in particular. I, I, for, I really forget what it's called, but you can do all kinds of things on it. And I like to do uh, a type of curl. You do it with the, the band or the cable. I like to do a type of bicep curl where you actually count one on the concentric and you actually count to four and slowly lower down on the eccentric, eccentric, I forget the word, um, portion of the exercise. So it's, it's called a negative something. So instead of like putting most of the force in this part, you're actually putting most of the force in this part. And, you know, every little thing you change can, can help. Um, you're hitting, like for instance, when you do chest exercises, you know, if you go like, of course there's incline, and going like, going straight up and going at this angle is going to hit a different point on your chest. So it's the same with, you know, many other uh, weight training exercises. You can just vary up the angle very slightly and you're gonna hit a whole other portion of that muscle and give it more fullness and, and definition. So that's kind of cool. Okay, one more set. All right, here we go. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, and twelve. Oh, okay. So when I do arms, I like to alternate between buys and tries because that way we've just, we've just done our first bicep exercise and you know, it should be burning a little bit. And so now when we switch to a tricep exercise, even though it's um, the opposite one, the opposing one, which depending on which one you're working is either the agonist or antagonist, even though it's gonna get a little bit of, you know, thermogenic activity, it's actually, um, it's kind, it's at least having, it's in the background, so it's getting a little bit of time to recover. So I do like to do that. Actually, you know what, technically, I could probably use a 15 pound weight here. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm actually going to grab a different weight. So you can keep using your 10 pound, but I, I think for this one, for me, I, I kind of need a little bit heavier weight. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with my 15 pound weight. So apparently you may need some different weights of dumbbells. So maybe I lied a little bit. I'm sorry, you mad bro? No. I'm just kidding. I apologize for lying, but um, you know I didn't lie. It was an accident. Anyhow, um, but I might even throw a five pounder in here. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So now we're going to do, I forget what the, I think this is a tricep extension, like an overhead extension. So, and you can do this with one hand also. Of course you'd use a lower weight, but I'm gonna do this one with two today and three and four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 12, 13, 14, oh, 15. Okay, I, you know what? I got a little bit in the zone there. I didn't mean to do 15. <laughs> hey, that happens sometimes. So I may or may not do 15 or 12 in the next in the next set. Just depends how I feel. I've heard that you're not supposed a trainer once told me that you're never supposed to go down in reps. But it doesn't mean it's the end of the world if you do. <laughs> And there's actually even a thing called pyramiding, which I like to do with a um, with the leg extension machine at the gym. The gym. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, so I you know you start with a certain amount of weight, 
and then you gradually get higher and higher. So I'll probably start with like, maybe, I don't know, maybe like 50 pounds and then increase by 20, uh, you know, one plate each time. And then when I get to like the sixth set, I don't know, it's like something like 90 or so then, and then I just, um, actually you go up 10 pounds. Yeah, that's what I said. So after that one, after that highest set, like, let's do another one of these, I'm talking too much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15. Okay, so actually I am up to 15. Well, that's a good thing. Sometimes when you get up to like 15 or a high rep number, then you may want to, that's that's the time that it's time to bump up your weight to a higher rep. I don't have anything higher than 15, so that's what I'm sticking with for now. But as I was saying with the pyramiding, oh, actually, pyramiding, you go up, 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 and each time you go up, you decrease your repetitions because you're lifting heavier weight. And then once you peak out at the top, then you go back down, but you increase your repetitions even more as you go back down. Yeah, I think that's how it works. I haven't done that in a long time. <clears throat> So we were at two, right? Here's our third one. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whew, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15. Okay, we have one more of those. Alrighty. Maybe a little, little stretch again. Oh, God, that feels so bad. Ooh. Yeah, as I said, I usually like to do a stretch beforehand, like kind of a full body stretch. I kind of forgot. I did read some information that said that, um, like stable stretching can actually be harmful and that you should do more like dynamic stretching. So in other words, instead of stretching and just staying still, that you should kind of stretch while moving, you know? So I thought that was kind of interesting. And I have pulled muscles before and it's not fun. And you've got to give yourself time to recover and all that jazz. Oh, that's so good. Whew, yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Nice, 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 nice. All right. Final set. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Okay. Okay, so Okay, so next up we're gonna do some hammer curls. I really like these. I couldn't tell you why, but I do. So I'm kind of excited. So here we go. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, and twelve. 
Okay. All right, let's go. Enough meditating. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten, eleven. 11 and 12, 12. All right, loving it. I feel empowered already. When you start doing weight training exercises, you actually start to, your posture changes, your demeanor changes. You just you start to walk more upright, you start to be more aware of maybe some imbalances in your body. Maybe you're, uh, you know, leaning to one side more than the other or overcompensating for something, you know, in like a hip or something like that. And you just start to be more aware of that. Along with this, um, you really should do some self care, like massage. I know all the massage places are closed right now, but I have a lot of like massagers, you know, I have like a foot massager, I have a back massager, a neck massager. And then I, I finally just recently bought one of those like massage guns, like the kind they use in physical therapy. I didn't get the Hypervolt, but the one I got, I'm extremely happy with. And you know, it works amazing for working out those little areas of tension works really well. So you can, you know, keep on doing what you're doing, not be bogged down by those knots. One. Two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, and twelve. And shoot, I can't remember if that's number three or four. I guess I'll have to do another one and maybe edit it out if that's the case. Oh, I, I love to stretch. It feels so good. Oh, it feels so good. Oh, nice. Mm. I'm so happy and grateful now for all the wonderful things. For the love, joy, strength, the wisdom, knowledge, courage, and the beauty, the path, the way, safety, security, and protection, the wealth, prosperity, and abundance of all that I have and all that's making its way to me now. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's my gratitude ritual. Just, just felt like a good time to do that. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm gonna do one more. I can't remember if I did three or four. So there we go. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine. 10, 10, 11, 11, 12, 
12. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're halfway done. Now we just have three more exercises. Uh, two tries and a bye. Okay, now what we're gonna do is, I think these are called tricep kickbacks. I'm gonna cheat and use a fiver because I haven't done these in a while. And even though I can do it with a 10, I feel that I'm gonna have better form with a five. And I wanna show you a little variation on them too, so. All right. So you're basically just gonna start in a flex position. Oh, actually, yeah. And extend and tighten your tricep right here. Flex it. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then we're just gonna switch legs, switch sides, go to the other side, and left arm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, take a little break, get my BCAAs. I have to make sure it's mixed up in there. And it is. Yeah, that's good. This comes in a lot of different flavors, by the way. And one container will last you like a long time. This is sour apple. And it reminds me of, there used to be a Gatorade flavor called sour apple. I know, artificial colors and all that. I know, I know not completely transitioned over. There's, I do make exceptions for stuff like this because working out is, it's important to me. When they make vegan, you know, branch chain amino acids and such, hey, I'm all for it. And I haven't checked that out in a while. Maybe they already exist, you know, so maybe it's time for me to double check, I'm not sure. Leroy, come on. I'm trying to work out here, really? <laughs> come on. Yes, his name is Leroy, as in Leroy Jenkins. Hey, zip it. I just fed you, go on, get, get lost, go on. All right, so, back to the grind. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And one, two, are you counting with me? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Come on, you're stealing the show. So that's two. All right, he's not gonna let, he's not gonna let it up. Hold on. I'm back. Demanding, I tell you. Okay, so yeah, I was gonna show you that variation on this. So um, I'd like to do this from the side, but it's tricky. But I'll try it this way first and then maybe I'll switch it over to the side for the next set. So right now we're keeping it, we're keeping the dumbbell straight, right? What we're going to do is you want to go through the full range of motion straight and give a little twist right at the end. Okay, so now instead of it looking vertical, it's going to be more of a horizontal position. Okay, let's try that. One. Two, and don't forget to flex your tricep at the top. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I really feel that. Burning, burning, baby. All right. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, one more to go. Okay. Oh, actually, this is part of that pre stretch I was telling you about. Oh my goodness. I could just sometimes just stretch and use my massagers all day and meditate. It's, it's good to take a day to recharge. You need that every once in a while. Oh, I'll let you come back with more vigor. Oh. Okay, take a sip. <clears throat> All right, so the next set, you can either do it the original way or you can do it the way I showed you, the modified way. I'm just gonna do it the modified way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh yeah, I showed you, I told you I was gonna flip around and I went sideways. Let's see if we can do that. I don't know if this is gonna get all of me in shot, but in frame, is that what they say? And left side. All right. One, two, three, oops, four, actually, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, all done. Okay, so we're on to our third and final bicep exercise. All right, and this is the barbell curl. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is a new bar, so kind of a, still finding my hand placement. I've been wanting a camber bar for a long time. There's another name for them too. I can't remember what it's called, but they're the ones with like the indentions. It's really hard to do a lot of exercises with just a flat bar. It just doesn't feel ergonomic, you know? It's like your arms get tweaked into some weird positions. E even these sometimes, but this is way better. So I'm thrilled to, um, thrilled to have gotten one finally. Thanks to my mama. Thanks, mom. Love you. <laughs> Am I being cheesy? All right, number two. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Seven, ooh, 12. Okie dokie. A little more stretching. Oh, yeah. All the way up to the sky. Yes, I have freakishly long arms, I know. Just call me Stretch Armstrong. Oh, my goodness, it feels so good.
คือคุณต้องพักผ่อนรักษาสภาพร่างกายเราเราเริ่มใกล้ถึงเส้นทางนี่ใช่ไหมข้อที่สองข้อที่สามข้อที่สี่ข้อที่ห้าข้อที่เจ็ดข้อที่แปดข้อที่เก้าข้อที่สิบ Cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, once, and doce. Okay, one more. Should I do the next one in French or German? Guess we're not gonna do it in French. I don't even remember the German counting. Took a couple foreign languages in high school, but of course, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's what's good. All right, all right, mofos, are you ready? Final one. Three already. Two. Cat. Sink. C. Set. I think it's wheat. Wheat. No. Two. Eleven. <laughs> And twelve. Woo! See, a little bit of weight. That's all it takes. <laughs> so for our final tricep exercise, we're going to do skull crushers. Okay. Right. And this bench is a little short. <laughs> Leaves something to be desired, but it's better than nothing at all. So here we go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And make sure your lower back is pressed against the bench. Um, and also, this doesn't have to be done this way. You can also, like some people do it this way. But once again, I think it's easier to keep your low back flat doing it this way. So that's the way I do it. And I think I messed up on number 10 in that last set, um, the bicep one. I think the French word for 10 is D. I said D twice, I think. I think it's like D-I-X or D-I-S. I'm, I'm not sure. It's been a while, but yeah, I messed up number 10. Okay. Getting to the end, feeling a little bit shaky, a little bit of muscle fatigue, but that's a good thing. Let's me know I, I worked it, right? So yeah, I'll also be doing a back one for this. And when I do back, I like to do um, back and chest, of course. And usually I throw the shoulders onto that. Sometimes I'll throw shoulders on with arms, but usually I do it with the back. And then when I do legs, obviously I do quads. Well, at the gym, I would do quads and um, 
hamstrings and glutes, but that's going to be a little different at home because I can't think of any, like, I don't have any, like, you know, hamstring curl machines or anything like that. So we'll see what happens. All right, let's go for another one. Make sure I get far enough to the end here of the bench so my head doesn't hang on. All right. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And honestly, so you can see I'm struggling with this exercise a tad bit. And for usually for the ones that I that I struggle with a little or I find a little harder, maybe that part of the muscle isn't as developed. I usually like to start with those to kind of, you know, get it out of the way or put all my first energy there. But because of the way I'm doing this, um, I also am trying to minimize my switching the, the tripod and that the position of the tripod and such. So um this is how, this is how the flow went, so just improvise. A little more stretching, a little stretchy stretch. God, that feels so good. Keep having sublime on my mind lately. I think that happens a lot in the summertime. Jailhouse gets empty. You can't fight against the youth. Them are rude, rude people. All right, here we go. I don't know, if, can I have that in my video? I'm not even sure. Might have to edit that out. One. Two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine. Oh, I feel the burn. Ten, and uh, one more. <laughs> So after this, I will show you what I'm going to make to feed my body, feed my muscles. I'm going to make um, something called chickpea of the sea. There's quite a few different recipes for it on, online. And um, I kind of just found one that I liked a couple years ago and, you know, over time just sort of tweaked it and adapted it to my own style. So. I'm looking forward to that. It's super yummy, tasty, plant-based deliciousness. <laughs> All right. Whew, doing good. It feels good to do something, huh? Do something for your body, do something for your mind. There we go. Here to go. Oh, hold on. My weights are loosening up a little bit. Every once in a while, you might need to tighten these. There we go. Okay. Set number four. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, woo, nine, ten. Oh, yeah. oh, my arm 
arms and my triceps are tight like a tiger. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, so let's wrap it up here. Congrats, you did awesome. Thanks for hanging in there with me. And now let's go, let's grub. So this recipe, chickpea of the sea, is meant to obviously mimic tuna. And some of these ingredients really make, really make it happen. I mean, so I have here a can. So what I have here is about one and a half cups of cooked chickpeas. And you can see as I'm mashing them up, the little skins sort of start to resemble like fish scales. I used to uh, rinse them, but now I only drain them because the chickpea, um, the brine called aquafaba, which they're preserved in, and these are canned chickpeas, by the way. Um, the aquafaba is so versatile, you can do so much with it, but did you know chickpeas tend to have a very strong flavor and aroma it's very distinct and it's somewhat umami and the only way i can describe umami is um it smells and tastes like something that has been fermented something that was once living and has you know changed um biochemically into something else but it just has like honey is umami, seaweed is umami, all the ferments, you know. Um, what else? There's something I'm thinking of. Um, that stuff that's like tofu, miso. Miso is very umami. So you don't want to crush it up too much because you don't actually want it to make hummus here. <laughs> so I think that's good. Now, this is gonna give it the fishy flavor. This is dulce, which is a type of seaweed. And it's also a little pink. And you know, tuna, the standard tuna is kind of slightly pink, not the one that's not the albacore. So let me see, how much do we use of this? About an eighth teaspoon. Okay, so we're gonna do about an eighth teaspoon. Honestly, when I make this, I really don't measure. <laughs> I kind of just throw everything in. That's, that's really the way I like to cook unless I'm developing a recipe or working on a dessert or something where it has to be specific. So we've put the seaweed in. Now we're gonna add this. It's called umi plum vinegar. And this is also somewhat umami and somewhat salty. And we're going to use a half to three-fourths of a teaspoon. Okay, so. Let's start with a half. And you just wanna kinda sprinkle that around. I'm gonna go with a half because I'm also gonna put some other salt in there and I don't want it to be too salty. Now what I like to do is sort of drive this seaweed into the chickpeas so it becomes enmeshed with the chickpeas. I can smell it, it smells good. Mmm, it smells very, it smells very sea-like. Actually, you know what? I'm going to add a little, I really like it to taste like, like the ocean. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more dulce, maybe another eighth. So yeah, I'm going to have to change that. Maybe a quarter teaspoon is the magic number. Okay, so now we're going to add our kind of fluid ingredients. And we're going to add three to four tablespoons of mayonnaise, vegan mayonnaise, because that's what I would do if I was making real tuna. I would add mayonnaise. Two. Now you don't want to overdo it on the mayonnaise because it will uh, dilute the flavor too much then that would kind of be a bummer. Actually, I'm gonna stop at two and see how that goes. See how that gets worked in there. You know what, I think two is good. 
yeah, two is plenty. Like I said, we don't want to overdo it. Okay, now we're going to add some may uh, mustard. Oops, I forgot to show you the mayonnaise. That's what I'm rolling with today. And here is the mustard. Just a tad. I mean, not even, it says a half teaspoon. That, that even seems like a lot. I'm gonna do like a half of a half. So maybe like a fourth of a teaspoon. Yeah. I don't know what I was thinking when I made this. I just, you know, your, your tastes change over time. Last time I made it, I felt like it was a little more on the subtle side with, with my ingredients and I was, it brought out the flavor more. Okay, so now, um, and you can see that's starting to really look like tuna. Now we got some seasonings coming up. So we'll do a quarter teaspoon of onion powder. That even feels like a lot. I'm not sure. Okay. And then a quarter teaspoon of celery salt. And then, oops, well, you know what those are. So this is black salt. This isn't the container it comes in. It comes in a bag from um, Indian markets and it's called Kala Namak. It's bound with sulfur. And this is wonderful in anything you want to taste egg-like, potato salad, um, I know people don't always put egg in their tuna, but it's one of those things like mustard. It's one of those little extra things, little secret things that families used, you know, to zing it up a little. So, so I really like it. Yeah, that's looking good. Oh, you can smell that. Woo wee. That looks so good. Look at that. Chickpea of the sea. Honestly, I mean, that looks bomb. You could put fresh, you know, stuff in here too. You could put like um, fresh onions and fresh celery. Mmm. Mmm, that's good. Mmm. Oh, it's missing something. Mmm. Let's see. Nope. It's good. <laughs> So this is the way that I like to enjoy these in a corn tortilla covered with some alfalfa sprouts and some fresh cut Roma tomatoes and some freshly cut avocado slices. It's just bomb. I love it. I don't know why it tastes so good this way. I've had it in a gluten-free wrap and that's pretty good too. And I'm not entirely gluten-free. I will eat good quality sourdough sometimes. And I have also had it, um, on sourdough grilled and non-grilled and with vegan cheese and without and with other vegetables and it's delicious that way also but this is really my favorite way to eat it and it just tastes so good and I am going to eat all of these and I invite you to watch I'm <laughs> just kidding honestly I can't wait any longer for these so here we go. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. The fresh veggies against the background of the saltiness and that kind of sea salt, oceanic umami. So good. You definitely should give this a try. It's one of my favorites. It's really easy to make. It's versatile. So it's kind of one of my go-tos. And it's super flavorful, so it's super satisfying. Oops. Mmm. So that's delicious. So I've got protein from the chickpeas, <clears throat> protein from my protein shake, and I'll probably make another protein shake a little bit later on today. So that's a good amount of protein for a workout day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and be on the lookout for more of my content. 
and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Hi everyone, what's up? I'm Marie. Welcome to my channel, Vegan Mo Show. <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs>